Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another Path of Exile video. Today we're going to be going through the 3.13 Echoes of the Atlas expansion as well as the Ritual League release. For those of you who haven't seen the trailer, it will be linked in the descriptions below. Uh, so we just watched the uh, announcement live streamed on uh, Twitch.tv slash Path of Exile and uh, it was... <laughs> it was a lot of things. It was a lot of things. We believe that the new design philosophy for Ascendancy Show me the is easier to understand and that they are oh. more concentrated. We look forward to revealing the rest of the changes next week. Like with improving Ascendancy classes, adding new skill and support. In this case, it upgraded the increased intelligence mod to also have plus one to the level of socketed intelligence gems. The other influence mod is removed. This opens up a mod slot, of course, so it's now possible to add another mod to it. Comfortable items that have different implicit modifiers than Path of Exile's regular base types. Specifically, they have a strong upside combined with an accompanying downside. It boring if that was something they had to do every single league. When deciding how to integrate Harvest into the core game, we knew that we had to curtail crafting somehow. But we didn't want to just do this by nerfing it along. You can hear them talking. The they solution. fucked up with this course. To earn and perform powerful crafts. They fucked up. We also knew that we didn't want players to have to grow and manage their own garden. Chris, every shut day. up! Try to watch so this shit! So the trailer's linked in the descriptions below. Make sure you check that out. It was pretty fucking amazing. So they're basically reworking the entire endgame system where you can emphasize and step for different types of league mechanics. I'm not going to go too much into the approach of um, what it actually means because you can just watch the trailer and you'll get all the information from there. However, I will give you my feedback and my points of views from what we've seen. I love the idea of the boss fights. For me, doing endgame bossing has always been a, a main focus for me in this game. And now that we're able to fight up to 10 juiced up bosses, I'm finally gonna bring out my big guns and go with a big dick build on the um, league release. And it's gonna be very fun to see how this goes. So a few other things is happening. Uh, probably should mention the most pressing ones that I wanna give my, my feedback on. It's the harvest and high scoring core mechanics. I'm gonna start with the harvest because that fe felt like the easiest one. Every now and then, and you can increase this through the new Atlas system, you will encounter gardens. These gardens have a slim chance of uh, proccing Oshabi, the boss, uh, who drops t terrible items, so hopefully you don't get encounter that one. But you'll get a, from my understanding, you get a set of different uh, pools of craftable, uh, well, plants. And uh, you get to choose one of these pools of what you want to choose from. You can do that and you can apparently store these crafts in your own hoarder crafting station, which is something that is gated inside your hideout. So if you want to trade these crafts that you save, uh, you will then have to, I'm guessing we have to go back on a Discord server to do this. And then, you know, people will come to your hideout and you can then apply the craft for them there for a fee. I like the idea that it's in your hideout. And I kind of like the idea that you're, not, that you're not able to sell them in that way. But I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of the whole requirement of a Discord server to do it. But, you know, that's the best system we have for now or the website for now. So we'll see how it goes. And there's also a cap of how many you can store either way. Uh, I love this idea because it removes the whole garden requirements, which is kind of a nuisance. And I think that's going to be very fun to, to play around with. Hopefully the cap is not too high, which means that you kind of have to either have a lot of items ready to be crafted when you get to the different crafts that you want to use, or you'll be simply focusing on one or two specific ones that you're tar trying to farm up, basically. But moving on to the more pressing one, and that is the heist one. Now, many people, including myself, have been absolutely hating Heist League, and I absolutely hated it, still do, and I don't want to see it core, but it's going core. So, you know, uh, what are you going to do about it? The biggest problem I had with Heist was that blueprints were barely worth running it was not worth mentioning because if you got a proper blueprint you'd rather copy that one by splitting it or fracturing it and then uh running that one with a juiced up um trinket right you're still able to do that but uh they have toned down the drop rewards which is good and they've also um made it so that when you split or fracture it you'll still have to uh, re-reveal the uh, the new blueprint, which means that people will then be purchasing the markers. So, so depending on how badly they nerf the drop rates in there, people will simply have to um, buy markers to keep revealing them. And we'll see where this lands. Hopefully it's not going to be too overtuned. The problem with this, in my opinion, is that no matter how much they nerfed it, people will should in the end game of heist not be willing to invest their markers into the other blueprints rather than the ones that are being copied uh, because eventually you'll be in a position where it's you, you you make more currency selling the markers rather than using them on a worse blueprint if you will and that in my opinion is not a healthy way to do it that, that's one of the biggest issues i have with heist and i think that issue will persist 
hopefully won't be as crazy in terms of currency farming as we've seen during the actual heist league. Unlocking, locking the Atlas passive skill trees, take control of the Atlas by unlocking regional passive trees, which augment contents you encounter or rewards you with specific exploring of these regions. So you get these big ass blocks making the complexity of the end game even more complex than it was before. Uh, and you can basically add different things here. For example, if you take this, this route in here, you get twice tempted, which may, may, makes areas contain an extra strong box. And these are things that are con persistently, uh, consistently in that area that you've upgraded this in. So there will always be an extra strong box and have 10% chance to be openable a second time, which is pretty cool. Strong box in area are corrupted and strong box in area at least rare. So there's pretty cool ways to do these things. And I really like this idea because it kind of allows you to double down on a specific league mechanic that you really enjoy. For example, I'm a big fan of crafting, so harvest is going to be one of the ones I really want. However, I might have another area where I'll be focusing on juiced up uh, head onto farming with 100 delirium maps and those that would rather have like strong boxes and beyond and stuff like that to juice them up even further. And we'll also be looking at craftable watchstones from this expansion, which seems fucking crazy. They are, unlike the unique watchstones, not going to disappear after a certain amount of runs you've done. And uh, you'll be instead able to craft specific modifiers so you can focus even further on specific league mechanics that you want to emphasize on these areas. And to my understanding, these are all sextantable, which means that the end game juicing of maps will be taken to a whole new level with the, uh, the skill tree for each map area, as well as craftable watchstones. I think it can be absolutely disgusting with what we can achieve. We have been seeing a lot of the magic fight guides I posted on my channel not too long ago, where we uh, showed people how to do three different specific maps, Burrow Chambers, Port, and uh, Tower maps to farm headhunters. And we are now able to juice them up even more. And that's going to be absolutely disgusting. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm not sure if they can go higher than blue like flasks or if they're actually able to go into a rare uh, rarity. We'll see. Um, so it's going to be pretty cool uh, with this entire approach. Uh, there's going to be 11 new maps as well. And from the footage, it, some of the boss fights here was really cool. Uh, we'll see some new abilities. Um, hopefully with these new level maps, we'll see some new specters as well. It's going to be really cool as well. And that's about it when it comes to the things I want to mention when it comes to the actual expansion. And then we have the Ritual League, which is the actual uh, league that we'll see in 3.13 coming out in the 15th of Jan January. So basically, these things are actually pretty cool. So the way they explain it is that you'll encounter these things, uh, these rituals, you have to kill the, the adjacent enemies, and then you can initiate it, which resurrects these enemies and spawns more enemies that you have to deal with, and you have to clear them off, and once you've done it, you're able to uh, get uh, this uh, currency stacked up on top of this ritual thingy, uh, or the pillar, or whatever you want to call it, which you then can utilize to purchase items that are shown in it, which kind of defeats this whole problem with you getting trash loot that you're just going to leave on the ground. You actually directly choose the items you want to keep. And if there's an item there that is rare and might cost more than the points you've accumulated, you can pay a smaller amount to save that item so the next ritual you do, that item will be available uh, in the next set of items as well. So you can keep doing that till you can afford it. Um, if you juice it up. There's also a way for you to store the monsters you got, did in one of these rituals to then pop a map like a scarab and use those inside the next map you pop. Uh, you cannot stack this, so you can only pop these on um, on uh, what Chris said was vanilla ritual, so you can only do um, a uh, saved ritual of a stack of monsters on a map. You can only do that uh, on one that isn't stacked up, so you can't stack one that is already stacked, so to say. Uh, which will increase the rewards you get and everything. So it's a really cool system. I like the, the most important thing about this is that it removes the loot clutter, clutter in my opinion. You choose the reward you want uh, or you save the loot you want for, for a future uh, purchase if you can't afford it. And I think it's really, really cool uh, that they do it this way. Another thing to mention, as you can see here, this pillar here, they will actually utilize different abilities. We only saw a couple in the, in the footage that I'm sure you've seen already. Uh, that you actually have to play around. So if not only do you have the monsters that you normally have to defeat, you also can sometimes get a boss in here. And you also have to deal with whatever mechanic the pillar itself is doing. It might be this quad beam spinning around like the serious quad beams. You have to walk around and dodge at the same time as you're fighting all the enemies. There's quite a few mechanics and we'll see how that goes as well. And basically the windows you can see here on the screen, the um, this is basically how it looks. You have tributes the remaining. You choose the item you want to purchase and defer. You'll pay a smaller amount for the item to lock it in place to purchase it at a later stage when you have more points to afford. 
I do believe that this is something that's going to be very interesting to do in the early stage of a league, uh, since specific unique items are very common, uh, such as Tabula Rasa, Wanderlust, Gold Rim, they drop a very low level and have a very low item level. So I'm pretty sure that this will all be item level gated, which means that you should have a pretty high area of chance of getting a Tabula at early stages, which is a very good tip for new players and people who want to get that early Tabula Rasa. I'm not sure if this is true. This will be very easy to determine that if you're doing it and you see a higher item level unique then it, the system won't work that way but if that never happens then that is actually a vi viable way to actually farm tabula rasas there's some pretty cool specific implicit unique guys or unique bases if you will they're white bases where they have one da downside modifier and one upside modifier for example a storm rider boost gives you attack da lightning damage based of per 200 accuracy but it also gives you 25 percent less accuracy there's a couple of these uh, pretty cool bases and they've also enabled a, a orb where from the uh, the actual expansion that you can utilize on um, conquer modifiers or conquer influence modifiers uh, where it will 50 50 take it has to be used on item that's two or more modifiers it will take away one of those modifiers and augment the other one the one shown in the video they had one with lightning damage taken uh, sorry physical damage taken as lightning and in percent increased intelligence and it removed the other mod and increased the percent intelligence to an elevated version which also gave increased level of socket of the intelligence gems so these elevated mods, together with the fact that we have harvest incoming, gives us the insane possibility of doing a shitload of crafting in the upcoming leagues. So it's going to be very fun to do these things. And this is the enhancing the rituals like I talked about. For example, this one here, Ritual Vessel, stores the monster slain from the first time from a completed ritual altar for future use. And once it's uh, filled, it's a blood-filled vessel from a Forge of the Phoenix map, for example, the tier 16. Uh, you pop this one as a scarab together with your monsters, giving this increasement to the rituals you do in the future uh, on the, in the map that you pop this one in. Uh, obviously you cannot fill, um, you can't stack this one and then do a ritual vessel on top of this one to stack two of them, so they did say that as well. Uh, experiencing new powers, we've seen some pretty cool changes with the elementalist mainly in the video. Uh, here we have the occultist, uh, or the occultist, and they have an additional curse, increase effect curses, and even curse of valediction it is a separate pathing here. And then they have profane bloom on a separate pathing for the hex proof and the cursing and the explode. You have a 40% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of the maximum life is chaos. We have the withering presses on the side, as well as the frigid wake on the side, as usual, and the void beacon in the middle. The vile bastion on the side of forbidden power is now separately here on the right hand side instead. So there's quite a few changes with the ascendancies that we have to like look at because they've actually fine tuned all 19 ascendancy classes whereas they've reworked quite a few of them the biggest reworks we've seen has been the elementalist and the inquisitor the inquisitor actually looks really 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 cool there's actually some uh, hit build and spell build together like a mage blade build that you can do now and the only thing i feel with it is that you might just want to do smite and then cast the spells you smite spells might spell that seemed freaking insane but in general i think that the uh, the changes made to the inquisitor is absolutely freaking crazy the uh, Inquisitor has a the effect with the Pious Path, I think it was, that makes enemies take 15% increased elemental damage. And for those of you unaware how the equations works in uh, calculating DPS in uh, Path of Exile, when an enemy has a debuff which makes them take increased damage, that's a multiplicate damage modifier of your final damage calculation and increasement and scaling from your own personal damage as that's applied on the enemy, he will then take that increased with a percent of increased damage taken, which is an insane modifier. That is why items like Bottle Faith is so crazy good. And even is used for summoner builds because of this modifier right there, where the concentrated ground created by the flask makes them take seven up to 10% increased damage taken. So this is the only modifier we care about when it comes to minion builds, for example. Now the Inquisitor has this, but with 15% increase and it stacks with Bottle Faith as well as shock effects and whatnot. It's just absolutely crazy. So it'll be very fun to see what they're going to be doing with this. Besides this, we have some real powerful new items. They've shown some of these new uniques. I didn't find them very interesting personally. There's some new uh, divination cards as per usual. Uh, so we have a league specific item with two implicit corrupted, 20 orb of alteration for acclimatization, uh, hydrosphere and trinity support are the two gems being shown so far. Hydrosphere looked pretty cool. I really like the idea of it. I'm not sure how well it will perform though. Trinity seemed really cool for the builds that are doing multiple different types of elemental damage. I'm not going to go too in depth with these because I want to see the 
patch notes before we dive very hard into all of these in depth. That's actually it. That's my uh, my basically my initial thoughts and um, whatnot of the current uh, announcement and reveals that we've seen so far. I'm very hyped about what we're going to see. I'm a little bit concerned about the increasing uh, complexity of the end game, especially for new players. But it seems, based on what we've seen, or from my perspective, that once we learn these things, it's every time they release something new, it's always hard because everyone is so blind when we're going in. But the thing is, the more information we have about the new mechanic, it does seem like it's going to be easier for endgame players or for new players reaching the endgame to understand the current new system compared to how they can do with the previous one. Um, I might be wrong, we'll see how it goes, I want to read the patch notes to see all the details, but to me that looked like it's going to be the actual result of these changes. Um, but most importantly, I am very, very satisfied that they're going to make bossing a main focus that you're able to ch achieve and chase down, because that's something I really love about this game, fight, uh, fighting endgame bosses. And currently, which is happening after a time, uh, some time a boss has been available, like... Uh, at Siri back in the days, many years ago, uh, we have had uh, Elder, Shaper, Uber Elder, Conquerors, Shaper Guardians, and, and all of these bosses, and Sirius, for example, and they kind of diminish in both value and uh, enjoyment of doing, and I think this will allow us to do a healthy mix of different game fights, because you're going to be able to fight up to 10 bosses, and you can then choose which 10 bosses you want to go for, and you can mix and match this, mi mix and match this uh, depending on if they give different rewards or not, we're not really sure how that works yet. Uh, making these fights different each time and that can be very fun to achieve. So I'm very much looking forward to that specifically. I think that covers pretty much everything. Uh, I did have a confirmation, however, from Chris Wilson. I asked him after the, the reveal. I asked him about the elevated mods that we talked about where you were removing one random influence modifier and augmenting one, another, another random one on the item. Uh, if that modifier is going to be Awakener Orbable, and the answer is should be, so we don't know yet. And that's basically all the information that I'm allowed to share for now. And uh, we're going to be going through this pretty heavily once we have more information. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the, all the changes and uh, what you're looking forward to the most or what you're disappointed about. And we'll see the patch notes and more reveals coming up in the coming days. And you'll see a lot of build guides and content and guides from me in this channel here on YouTube as well as on Twitch. And as well as on Icy Veins website as well for my forum guides. That's all I have. You guys stay safe, keep rocking, hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you next time, boys. Good night, everybody.